Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Relab Live. Uh, you know, like if you've been following the content, I've lost count quite a bit now, so I'm not going to say what episode number this is because, in all honesty, I don't exactly know what it is anymore. Um, but what I know is we're planning to um, put a stop onto a season one of this, just so. There's a, I guess there's a season two that's coming a little bit later, maybe after Christmas. Um, but I'm thinking around the episode, uh, around the number 20, 21 or 22, we'll, we'll put a stop to this Real Life Live that we call episode, sorry, that we call season number one. Uh, and then we'll do a review from there and hopefully produce better content for season number two. Uh, but hopefully if you've been following us, um, I hope the content that we bring forward to you has been, I guess, not just entertaining, but insightful as well at the same time. Uh, like I previously said, um, you know, we're not heavily equipped in the things that we're, do we're doing here, and we're really recording with just, with just an iPhone. Um, but anyway, I think the point is to provide as much insight to you guys who are interested in the industry or for those who are starting as well um, or wanting to get into the business of uh, design or a digital agency, hopefully we've shared one or two things with you. Okay, now today here I've got Didi with us, um, he's our project manager here in Relab, so he, like on a daily basis Didi helps me a lot in terms of managing projects. Uh, priorities, its resources, um, and making sure that it aligns with the budget that's uh, that's been given to us as well. Um, so really, um, a lot of I guess not just administration but uh, production management as well. So in a these days in a digital environment, in a digital agency environment, it's kind of like a role that that's been known as a producer. Uh, we don't really use that term here, but anyway, DD helps a lot with many, many things. That's, let's just put it that way. All right, um, so DD, thank you for spending time. I know you're very, very busy, but um, we're going to take about eight to 10 minutes, hopefully, in this one, uh, and we'll make it very, very efficient. So the reason why I have DD here is um, in line with the previous episode, um, which was where I shared a little bit about the things that we did in our team building session or in our workshop session, um, is about the idea of thinking forward and also thinking about the goals, not just for Relab, um, but goals in a bigger picture for each individual. So that is very important for me personally as well. And I encourage everyone in the team to think that way and to have a sense of purpose in whatever we're doing. So hopefully the, on a day-to-day -day basis, um, when we spend time here in real life at work, um, it aligns to what each individual want to do moving forward. So uh, one of the things that I want to do is to have real life as that vehicle for everyone. Um, so, you know, Didi um, started as a designer originally, this has probably been like three, over three years now, um, originally started as a designer, and then now he helps me manage projects, so um, it's been quite a leap, I think, um, starting from a designer to a project manager, and Didi, maybe you can share a little bit about, I guess, the process of what you've gone through so far. And if there was one thing that um, is the biggest challenge for you that you had to overcome throughout that period, what would it be? Maybe share with us. Yeah, so I think uh, in terms of the process, um, just really up to the task of you know, stepping up of uh, what the company needed at the time, which is you know, helping Alvin with the day-to-day -day task and managing uh, managing the project because like uh, Alvin as the owner his uh, his role is mainly to you know develop the business to you know see the vision on where uh, real life has to go so uh, my job really is uh, well at the time is uh, helping him to you know like design stuff but mm -hmm. at the same time uh, I can see myself helping uh, you at the time to actually like you know make sure the studio is running projects are running uh, and you know, like the overall business side of things, like day to day grind, uh, really to you know smooth down the process. Really, mm -hmm. uh, in terms of uh, my 
is my learning curve. So I'm like the things that I've really learned uh, throughout the years is really to manage uh, client expectations. To uh, because I'm a I'm a, I'm a quite technical person. So sometimes when I when I explain stuff to the client, I'm just like basically saying whatever it is. So sometimes it can actually make client panic. Mm. Because, for example, uh, when I explain, oh, there's this problem, blah, 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 we're looking into it. But instead of saying that maybe we should just say, oh, yeah, just leave it with us, uh, we'll come back with a solution. But I was, maybe I was just uh, at the time was really into work mode. Yeah. And I just basically, oh, yeah, here's the problem, uh, technical point A, technical point B. And then, you know, like uh, the client kind of panicked. And uh, I have to calm them down at the end, but because they already panic, you know. Right. Instead of uh, instead of me saying, "Oh yeah, we we're uh, working through this," but uh, don't worry, we'll you know yeah. we'll get through it. Yeah. Okay. So managing client expectations, I think that's a that's a very important point, and it, it's something that doesn't come easy for um, a lot of people. Uh, I guess for me as well, because I'm also a designer, and Didi comes from a multimedia background, like multimedia design. So Didi is slightly more technical than me, because uh, I come from a graphic design background. But I think in terms of managing client expectations for us, people who are used to production, whether it's a designer, a developer, uh, someone who's not used to client-facing job, I guess, originally, and that's the same case with me. We tend to be a little bit more, I guess, upfront with the challenges that we have or the things that we foresee uh, in terms of a technical, I guess, um, issue or challenge. Whereas someone who comes from a client services background would be a lot um, more experienced in terms of hiding that, I think, from a client. That's correct. I guess um, for us, it, it's kind of like taught us a good thing and a bad thing as well, where I guess we know what's happening background like we really know what the concerns are from our you know our, our production team yeah. but I guess over the time we try to learn on how to set expectations and I guess be honest you know with having all of this transparency happening with the customer but still I guess being able to calm them down at the same time to ensure that everything's fine uh, so um, I think that's a good answer and I think that's true um, and in terms of, you know, again, looking back from when you first started to yeah. now, um, from being a designer um, to, I guess, now being able to help me manage a team, which includes designers, then what was the, the most difficult thing for you then and how did you overcome it? Like, think of it, think when you first started well, like to me, because uh, well, everyone's style is different. Sure. Uh, aesthetics. Yeah, aesthetics are yeah. different. Like what I uh, foresee is good mm -hmm. or good enough. Uh, sometimes it's not good enough to like other designers. Yeah. So to me, that was that was my biggest challenge mm -hmm. to align myself uh, more with real life, I guess, aesthetics. Mm -hmm. uh, and then. I think design-wise, that was the, the biggest one for me. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And um, maybe talk to us as well about um, what is it that you enjoy the most being here in real life. Oh, by the way, can I put a disclaimer? This is not staged, guys. <laughs> <laughs> so we didn't plan for this. Um, and uh, you know, just so you know, it's not staged. I just want to put it out there. Okay. Uh, so what is it? What is it that you enjoy the most being here? In real life? Uh, it's not like I've got a gun somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, go for it. No, so uh, I really like the work environment. Uh, to be honest, I'm being completely honest. Uh, <laughs> no gun or anything pointed at me, but yeah. So the I really enjoy working uh, with the guys over here. Um, you know, we are. It's almost like a like a like like a mini family, uh, mm. to be honest, because like we we are there for each other and we try to help each other as much as we can, and uh, it's just overall that we, you know, the environment that we care about what we're producing. I think that's that's very positive. Like to like me personally on my personal growth 
and my aesthetic growth as well. So that's that's the single most uh, you know, thing that really kept me here. Okay. <laughs> so good, good. Okay. So um, and you know, thinking about uh, if there was an advice that you could give yourself when you were a lot young. <laughs> well, you're still young, but when you you were just starting, for example, or to designers or developers who are starting, you know, just finished uni and then wanting to get themselves into the industry, um, what type of advice do you think you could give these guys? I would say uh, maybe it sounds cliche, just just to stay hungry, really, just to basically uh, try to outbest yourself like one month back. Uh, and just try to be like a better version of yourself always um, and never be satisfied of yeah. what you are at the moment. So. Cool. Yeah. Well, that's pretty much what I think as well. And then I think that's how we in Real Lab has grown. Um, it's, it's just, um, I guess, constantly learning from our mistakes, but at the same time, try to be out of the comfort zone a little bit. So. So don't settle for the comfort. Uh, so once you get to a certain stage, like for us, then we try to take more risks. Um, I guess measure measurable risks. That way we were able to lift up our benchmark a little bit and move forward. Because otherwise we're we're going to stay static. And I think as individuals, that's pretty much the same as well. So um, um, I think. Uh, we'll leave it there, but hopefully the things that we've brought to you and the information that we've shared or our thoughts has um, given you a little bit more things to think about. Um, and hopefully it's, it's positive as well. Okay. All right, Didi, thank you so much for spending time with us. No, no. Uh, we're going to go back to work. But um, guys, uh, thanks for tuning in and we'll see you next time.